So how did how did uh, how did this initiative all start in the South End? You've got big plans, great vision. How did it start? Well, it's it's not, uh, Donnie. It isn't something that uh, is relatively new uh, in our community. Actually, it's been a culmination of many years and and partnerships with the Community Foundation, partnerships with <laughs> United Way, partnerships with the University of Toledo. We're able to do studies uh, on what it is that we need to bring our community back on the economic level and education. And so we've done some uh, some progress in education and we continue to do that in partnership with Toledo Public Schools and, and the higher uh, educational institutions. And now we're going into the economic development uh, arena. And so that's been a, a result of studies that we've done in partnership with our partners in, in our community. What are, your, what are your studies showing? Well, in, in education, and, and Giselle can, can speak to this, but in education, um, it was that we need to, in the earlier part of the pipeline, we need to be able to make sure that our children have the tools uh, to be able to be successful. That yeah. uh, if we're starting to address the issue at a high school level or junior high, it's too late. that it's too late. Right. And, and so we were realizing the dropout rate is still too high in our community. Uh, and so what we need to do is make sure that we tackle that. So we're looking at initiatives in the Head Start and early childhood uh, type of initiatives. That's what we're doing in, in that area. And uh, Giselle, do you want to speak to that? And we have pro programs that start from prenatal to, you know, uh, sixth graders now. At Adelante. Adelante. And yeah. when we work with kids, we look at them from the beginning and we can tell children that had an early intervention early literacy early something and when we when we talk about with funders you know we look at where did it all start where does it peak and it's always you know between fifth and sixth graders so it's mm -hmm. getting like earlier and earlier so we do a lot of things to focus on families you know parent involvement you know you you hear all, all the time how you can get involved how, why you should get involved and in our communities you know it, it it's a little challenging because of some of the barriers. It's particularly like language barriers. Yeah. So when we're we're there, you know, with our parents to make sure that they're also getting the information provided um, from schools, from yeah. teachers. I was just going to ask you: Is is there really a difference in communities in the way? that um, this issue is approached? Because quite frankly, it's the same issue in lots of communities. In yep. the African-American communities, right. it's the same issue. High dropout rates, uh, interventions way too late. Right. Right. Does it make a difference? You know, it, it, it is, and I think that that's, that's where, um, uh, when you talk about strategies, and, and you know, we, uh, at the chamber, we're meeting with corporate entities. You know, we're meeting with the ProMedicas, we're meeting with the Bob Evans uh, mm -hmm. and their corporate entities and they're all talking about targeting the Latino community. And what we find in, in meeting with ODOT and many other uh, uh, partners at the, uh, at the federal level, what we're, what we're telling them is that the traditional means of accessing communities may work with uh, the African American community, may work with the non-Latino community, but when it comes to Latinos particularly, um, they go to centers of, of, of understanding. They go to centers where they feel welcome. And a lot of those times, it's the Adelante facilities or it's the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And so what we need to do is take some of those traditional programs and then partner with those agencies so that we can then become the link between uh, the opportunities and the people that can, can actually participate in, in, in that commerce. So is it, is it your thought that uh, Latinos generally are not feeling welcome in social service venues? I. I mean, some, I can't say all, but I think be when you get a letter from a school or an invitation or a flyer, they're like, what does this mean? You know, it, it's not in their language, you know, and it's not in their area. So, so that's really the issue. Exactly. Someday. Is that what you meant? Well, really? and, and, and not only just language, but it's also uh, a level of comfort. You have to understand mm -hmm. that um, the Latinos, uh, by, uh, by culture, uh, many of us, whether we're Latinos that come from Puerto Rico, from Nicaragua, from Guatemala, Mexico, um, or even uh, stateside Latinos, that, uh, that there is a sense of entrepreneurship that is inherent in many of us because of the countries that we come, come from. from. Absolutely. And so uh, without any aid from anyone else or any agency, we're going to start a business. Right. And, and what we find is that many of those resources that they use to start a business could have been better off them going out and getting a small loan or working with a minority business assistance center, but they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And so what we're saying is they go to a level of comfort, which is 
somebody like yourself. I get it. And so we need to be that, that entry, that port of entry for a lot of these uh, businesses and a lot of these uh, entrepreneurs. Right, I get it. So it, other kind of barriers, we talked about language, we talked about just, you know, not seeing enough people that look like you along the, along the journey to being successful. Are there other barriers that you're running into? I think one of the things that I'm always asked, like, why is Adelante here? You know, yeah. like, you know, this has nothing to do with, you know, what's going on. But in, in fact, you know, when you talk about economic development, you know, we're in that Broadway corridor. We want to uh, be accessible to our clients if they're interested in other things. When you talk about barriers, transportation, language barrier, you know, it, the area that we are in, you know, even though the biggest community of Latinos is on the east side, but that's just a bridge away. All of the, when you talk about all the Latino agencies, you have Sofia Quintero, right. you have the Providence Center, you have um, that are all Nueva on Esperanza, the they're, side. they're yeah. on, this, you know, on Broadway. Yeah. And um, there's future there, you know, it's exciting to see vibrant colors when you go down the street. We even have a, a new um, mural, you know, that expresses, you know, our culture and who we are in different right colors. Right at the bridge? No, it's actually on our building. Oh, on your building? Yes, oh, 520 Broadway, that. if you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Yes, that. it's really pretty, and, and, it, and it, it just speaks, you know, to who we are, what we're doing, and it has yeah. like a butterfly and different colors, and it's really neat. Not because True. it's in our building, but, <laughs> but you know, when, when you talk about, you know, different barriers, you know, it's, it, it's, you, it's not, it's unique to everybody to look at barriers in a different light. Your barriers right. are different than mine, right. Right. you know, and so I, I'm not far from, you know, our clients and our clients' needs and what we're doing at Adelante, which is a, different than we've done in the past, is going back to the roots, you know, going back to the basics, you know, listening to our clients' needs and our community around us and not going too far from reality, you know, we can't the go. The reality of that neighborhood, exactly. the reality of the, mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of economic development in that area, what's the vision? Like well, if you could have it any way you want it, what would it look like? You know, you sure? I, I would say it's, it's uh, Rahm Emanuel's vision. Uh -huh. and, and, I, and I'll share this, you know, Rahm Emanuel, mayor of Chicago, right. uh, at his first anniversary, uh, had, uh, had a, a dinner with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce there in Chicago. And, uh, and he was on 26th Street, which is Mi Veita, which is Little Village little there village, in Chicago. Yeah. I know that area. And, and he said, he goes, next to the Miracle Mile in Chicago, this is the highest grossing district uh, in revenue uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He goes, my desire would be to have two more miles of this, uh, of this district. Mm -hmm. So his, what he was saying is, is that we need to invest in this immigrant community. We need to invest in this growing, diverse community here in Chicago, which is a Latino community. Mm -hmm. I looked at that and I said, why is it that Chicago, Detroit, and many communities around us, many states around us, have actually capitalized on the, the immigrant growth, mm -hmm. and yet here in the state of Ohio, not even in Cleveland or Columbus or the Cincinnati struggle. or Dayton yeah. or Toledo, yeah. do we have a Latino corridor or a yeah. Hispanic corridor yeah. or a Via Hispana? Yeah. And so the vision for South Toledo is, is what everybody has always thought it could be. Because we have all of the icons, Flax, Sofia Quintero, Adelante, we have many of those, Esperanza, Nueva Esperanza Federal Credit Union. Mm -hmm. Because we have many of those already down that corridor, it would be ideal to be able to do an economic corridor that is based on the Latino community. And so the vision for many of us, and the vision for those of us at the Hispanic Chamber, is to be able to partner with the county and the land bank, be able to partner with many of the ministries that are in the area to work together uh, in collaboration to actually um, put a new face onto that. Mm -hmm. So we've been meeting with the Port Authority, we've been meeting with the county, we just met with Commissioner Pete Gerken on how we can uh, also partner with his Welcome Toledo or Global Toledo, whatever that's going to be. They just had mm -hmm. T uh, Steve Tabachman in, mm -hmm. and, and Steve spoke about his experience in, in um, Mexican town in, in Detroit mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. how that's been a good uh, birth of uh, mm -hmm. uh, immigrant investment in that area. Mm -hmm. And so we said, why is it that we're so close and yet we've not been able to borrow from some of the, the good economic uh, uh, ideas or Examples concepts of, in other communities? Right. So, right. so, so the vision down uh, Broadway is to actually uh, begin to invest as an entire community, Port Authority, city, the county, uh, and the state, 
and be able to to do a Via Hispana down down Broadway. And yeah. we have some of that already happening right now. Mm -hmm. And Sofia Quintero is getting ready to make an investment. I'm, I'm bringing a commercial uh, uh, kitchen into that area. And, and you know, we know that in our Latino community, we do a lot of good cooking. Yeah, great cooking. Of, of many great cuisines. cooking. Uh, yeah, I have many pounds to <laughs> attest to that. In fact, but you know, I think it's important to tell people that in those t in those areas like Mexican Town and in the areas in Chicago, which I'm very familiar with, I get to Chicago a lot. Those t those areas are inclusive of every everyone's invited in. It's not. They are not areas for people who might be thinking that they would be segregated areas or specifically no, uh, in fact, designed it's, to it's, serve. No, yeah. It's the opposite. It, it is it's, just the opposite. What, what, you're right. what you're looking at is you're, it's possibly could be compared to uh, Asian Village in Cleveland mm -hmm. or Little Italy in Cleveland. In Cleveland, so, right. So what right, it is, right. is it's more of a destination attraction for those that want to experience Latin America. That's right. And that, that's what we want it to be. And, and there's great reason um, for the entire community to support this development. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, this rolls downhill. It, it will it will empower lots and lots of people, bring lots of money into the economy. Lots of good reasons to support this kind of development. And I'd like to talk about that when we come back, all right? We have to take a break, but we will be back in just a second.